pinch and a punch for the first of the month and no returns. Oh, look, says I, there's a bit of blue sky. But only a very little bit. Good afternoon. I got up at about ten past nine, just in time to watch Joe Wicks. Not that I did. And I would only be watching, not actually actively taking part. It's now about half past twelve, twenty-five to one. I've got up, I've had breakfast, I've got showered, I've had, I've got myself dressed, and I've done a load of washing, which is pretty good going for me. I'm now off on my way to get a blood test. Now I'm travelling to the local hospital, and this is the furthest I will have travelled since the beginning of lockdown started. So I'm slightly cautious. Bit of a problem. Well, a quandary. I don't want to get arrested. I don't want to get questioned by the police. I don't want to get stopped. I don't want to have any problems. Chances are there won't be, but I'm, like I say, I'm slightly cautious. I'm slightly worried. I have a letter from my GP surgery sent to me, my address, GP header, GP details, plus the blood form. Blood form I'm going to have to take anyway. The letter would be perfect proof of why I am travelling so far from my home. However, having a handbag with a piece of paper which has my address on and keys is kind of dodgy, just in case the bag gets lost or stolen. I mean, chances of that happening are slim, but there is always a chance. It's happened to me once before. It's not good. So which is the bigger risk? Travelling somewhere under lockdown without proof of where you're going or having your keys and your address in the same place? Now, the blood form will work on the way out, but it won't be there on the way back. To be honest, I think I'm going to take the risk. I'm not taking the letter from my GP. See, these are things I think about when I'm in the shower. I always have the weird ideas when I'm in the shower. So I've just put my hoodie on, ready to go out. It's not a good day today. I timed that appallingly. All I've done is walk from the flat to the bus stop and I literally have water dripping off my hood. I've got it dripping off my camera. My shoes are wet, my jeans are wet. And as far as I can tell, my bus isn't for another 20 minutes. Downstairs was quite full, so to socially distance from other passengers, I've come upstairs and I'm sitting at the front pretending to drive. Sitting at the top, I heard my stop being called. I pressed the button, it didn't work. I pressed the other button, it didn't work. 
I came down, the bus driver wouldn't let me off and then when he got to the end of the road and I said, well, could you let me off on the first bit? I said, no, you need to press the button. time in the NHS I am so used to the pictures on the back of that soap dispenser. Never been more pertinent. This bus stop brings back memories. It's a few years ago I was visiting somebody who had been admitted and a couple of evenings there was a lady here I think she was said she was a carer but her level of conversation was a little more simple, simplistic than mine and she wouldn't take the hint that I didn't really want to talk to her because I was tired and stressed out and I just wanted to be at home asleep. Happy days. So I'd totally forgotten about her until I came to this particular bus stop. I am home. I am still decidedly unimpressed at the amount of communication or lack of from that hospital trust. I am going to make my feelings known via email. On the plus side, the rain has stopped, the sun has come out, there are bees in the garden, well bee singular but I'm sure there'll be others somewhere, and James who was on a standby shift has not been called to go into work so he's back in the flat. So all in all, it could be a lot worse. So it's about quarter to seven. I'm still slightly hacked off at the lack of communication from the hospital on their website and also from the GP. So GPs knew that the location for GP blood tests had changed, but there was nothing in the letter that the GP sent me, or the GP surgery sent me, to say that... I had to go to hospital A rather than hospital B. So I have sent a an email to pals at the hospital, which is patient advice and liaison service. And I have also sent an email to my GP surgery asking them why they did not let me know that I needed to go to a different hospital to the one I went to. That's all I can do. I've been sitting watching some podcasts, I've been doing some knitting, I've been doing some editing. James has just got back from the a trip to the supermarket, well not just, but about 10 minutes, 15 minutes ago. Got some stuff for dinner this evening, we're going to be having sweet and sour noodles or stir fry noodles or it's basically bung a lot of fresh Chinese vegetables into a pan with some noodles fry it all up it's absolutely delicious really quick quite simple and very healthy because it's just full of vegetables and then this evening I'll probably do some more knitting I need to take out the seams of those two blouses to make a bag and that is that for Friday roll on the weekend and see you tomorrow <laughs>